In this terrific episode of The Practical Divorce Lawyer, I'm going to tell you why many divorces are so expensive. So listen up, you might learn something. Welcome back, everybody. In case you're new here, I'm Jonathan Noble, divorce and family law attorney, licensed in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. I'm making this video in August of 2023, uh, and I could make a whole series of videos about why divorces are so expensive. But what prompted me to make this video today is Kevin Costner, the actor, is in the middle of a divorce, and now his soon-to-be ex-wife doesn't understand or maybe claiming she didn't understand the prenuptial agreement. And through my lens as an experienced divorce lawyer, how on earth can you make a decent argument that you didn't understand a prenuptial agreement when you had competent legal counsel explain it to you? As far as I know, she speaks English as her first language and understands it. But Typically, in a divorce case, you propound discovery requests on the other side. And one reason why divorces drag on and become incredibly expensive is because the other side doesn't answer discovery in a timely manner and in a complete way. So you have to ask for more documents. You have to propound more discovery requests. It might lead to taking people's deposition. You have to issue subpoenas to get the documents they're withholding from you. That's why it costs so much. Now, uh, in Costner's case, if I were the judge, I'm not, but if I were, if somebody brought a claim that they didn't understand the, the premarital agreement or they didn't understand the word understand because uh, they didn't answer the question, did you understand the premarital agreement, they want... Costner's lawyer, who's probably close to $1,000 an hour now, uh, maybe more, to define the word understand. That leads to more letters, more litigation. Uh, and you don't have to have that kind of money that Costner has. Even in a run-of-the-mill divorce, when I propound discovery requests, I can't tell you how many times the other person digs their heels in, gives up fragmented information, or provides documents that we never even asked for, but won't provide the documents that we're zeroing in on. So we have to file motions to compel and ask for sanctions. It's a mess. So usually it's the client. Sometimes it's the lawyer behind this. Sometimes they just try to bleed uh, the other side dry, but you could ask for sanctions in most jurisdictions. The problem is it extends the amount of time to get out of the bounds of holy matrimony. You want to get on with your life. You don't want to be spending thousands and thousands of dollars just to get to the finish line. But a lot of times that's what happens, especially if you're in a divorce with someone with a personality disorder who thinks that the laws don't apply to them. And I've been involved in many of those. Eventually, we get what we want at a high cost, and almost always, I'll ask the judge to have the other side pay for my client's attorney's fees. So if you're watching this and you are dating a stubborn person who maybe went through a bad divorce, dig a little deeper because if they get, they're going to divorce you eventually if you're not careful and you're going to spend a boatload of money unnecessarily. All right? Stay single, then you don't have to worry about getting divorced, okay? And if you're in Canada, watch out, because you could find yourself married just by living with somebody for a fairly short period of time. Yeah, they have that common law marriage thing. Also, in places like Texas and maybe about 10 other states, common law marriage still exists. So if you want to avoid divorce... Seek local legal counsel in your jurisdiction to make sure that you're not going to end up in a situation 
that you can't easily get out of if things go awry, all right? Share this with someone who thinks that getting divorced is easy and inexpensive, because it's not. Be careful out there. Drop a comment, like, subscribe. Love to have you as part of the community.